What's up guys and welcome to this video. This video is the budget PC build 2015. This is all about getting a great PC build that's going to be able to play any title at 1080p without spending a ridiculous amount of money. Just because there are loads of PC components out there that cost a load of money doesn't mean that you should be buying them and you can get a great gaming PC experience without actually spending too much money. So without further ado, this is the budget PC build 2015. So as always, we will start with the PC case. And the case in question is the Corsair Spec 01. Now this is a case that I really like. It doesn't cost you a great deal of money, but you get loads for your money. Corsair have a reputation for quality products throughout their range, and this is no different. Sure, it only comes with one LED fan, but everything else about the case is pretty fantastic. It's very nice and roomy, it's easy to build in, it looks very good, it's got a nice windowed side panel, and you've even got stuff like 5.25 inch drive bays if you want optical bays as well. Literally, you could build a really expensive system, system in this without actually missing out on too much. It really is a great case, and if you look at the reuser reviews for this case, you'll see that people don't disagree. But what about what's actually inside this machine? Well, we'll start with the CPU, the processor. We've gone for the AMD FX6300. And yes, it's true that there is the newer 6350, but that is actually a fair bit more expensive, so it's not actually worth going down that route for the budget option. Now, this is a hex core processor, so it's got six cores, and it really does deliver at the budget end of the PC market. It's not going to limit you in terms of frames a second as long as you pair it with an appropriately budget graphics card, and it's also available at a great price. And the motherboards are actually pretty reasonable as well. All these reasons and the fact that realistically for a budget gaming PC you don't need anything else, that's why I've gone for the FX6300. Now we will be using the stock AMD cooler for this rig, and that is actually another reason why I went for that processor, because yes, you can get the Pentium by Intel that you can overclock, but you still need a decent CPU cooler to do that. So in terms of budget, there's not actually that much point in doing that unless you've got a cooler lying around the house. So that's the processor and the cooler, but what about the motherboard or the mainboard? Well, the one I've gone for, as always, has a really long name, so you can find that below, but it's one by Asus, or Asus, depending on how you want to say that, and it's very good because it's quality without actually spending too much money. And what do I really mean by that? Well, there are quite a few motherboards that you can find that are cheaper than this, but the problems I had with recommending those is that there have been quite a few reports of things just basically going wrong or not being built as well as they should. Some of them had issues with the VRMs not being quite as good as they could be and things getting very hot, as well as others just things like the motherboard just plain up stopped working after three or four months. And for reasons like that, I didn't feel comfortable recommending that sort of motherboard. So I've gone for a slightly more expensive one, that one that will cost you about an extra £15, £20, or of course dollars more, but I would say that's worth it for going for a higher quality motherboard that also has things like USB 3 headers and SATA 3 6 gigabyte a second, um, 6 gigabit a second um, actual ports on them as well. So it's a higher quality product that comes with higher quality features and it's also reliable. What more can you want? Now it is worth noting that Path Picker do say that some motherboards will require a BIOS flash before you can use them. And if that is the case with this motherboard, then this can be done pretty easily just via a USB stick, and you won't need another CPU or any RAM lying about the house in order to do that. Now next up is memory, or of course, random access memory, RAM. Now I've gone for eight gigabytes this time, and I've gone for eight gigabytes of crucial 16 megahertz RAM. Now that's two four gigabyte sticks, and the reason I've done this is because while I've recommended that four gigabytes could be enough in previous videos, we're at the point now where most of the games that come out recommend that you have a minimum of four, but recommend six. And for this reason, it's better to go for eight gigabytes and have maybe a little bit too much, than go for four and start to run into problems. If you wanna run all the latest titles, then you're gonna need that eight gigabytes of RAM. It's gonna give you a better computing experience as well as a better gaming experience. So unless you really, unfortunately, can't get the budget for 8 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes really is the way to go. Now next up is the graphics card, arguably the most exciting bit about the PC. 
And the graphics card I've actually gone for is the most energy efficient. It doesn't require any PCI connectors as long as you get one of the more standard um, revisions. And that is the NVIDIA GeForce 750 Ti. And the reason I've done this is not only just because I quite like NVIDIA, because I think their GeForce Experience app and things like Shadowplay are very good. It supports G-Sync, of course. But the main thing really is just that this is a great value GPU. It represents great value for money. You can pick one up for around about £100 here in the UK. And you're going to get some great gaming performance at 1080p. If you want to play any of the classic titles like Dota or League of Legends or anything like that, it's going to absolutely blitz through it. And if you want to play one of the more modern titles, it will be able to handle it around about high settings at 1080p. And realistically, that is all anyone actually needs if they want to become a PC gamer. Talking about power efficiency, of course, though, we will need a power supply. And the one I've gone for is my trusty old EVGA 430 watt. It's a very good budget power supply. It's 80 plus certified, so it will be that little bit more energy efficient than some of the competition. And 430 watts is all we will need in this machine because it really doesn't actually consume much power at all. Other than that, it's got some great user reviews from people that use it and say it's great. And that is one of my reasons to wholeheartedly recommend the EVGA 430 watt power supply. Now lastly, there is one more physical bit to actually put in this machine. And that is, of course, the storage devices. And the storage devices that I've gone for are devices. I've gone for an SSD and a HDD. SSD is, of course, a solid state drive, which is going to be used as a boot drive to make your Windows experience much quicker, as well as have some room for other programs and, of course, some games. And yes, you could go without an SSD. My very first PC that I built didn't have an SSD in it, but let me assure you, I really did regret it. And as soon as you've used a gaming PC or just any sort of computer in general that has an SSD, you just can't go back. Literally, it makes no sense to go back whatsoever. It's a massive difference. So the SSD I've gone for is a V300, and that's by Kingston. That's only the 120 gigabyte model, which is more than enough for your OS and a few games and a few programs. And then there's also a one terabyte mass storage Western Digital Blue hard drive for mass storage, so things like movies, pictures, and of course your games. And so that was everything physical in the rig, but of course we will need to put something that isn't physical, the operating system, on this machine, and the one that we've gone for is Windows 8.1. It's personally my favorite operating system. It's better than Windows 7 because it's quicker to boot, it's quicker to use, and the File Explorer and the Task Manager are that little bit better and give you more details, as well as a very good search functionality. And whenever I go back to Windows 7, not having those stuff does annoy me slightly. It is, of course, worth noting that if you plan to use a 4K display, Windows 8.1 has much better display scaling, so icons aren't going to be tiny, and they're going to be scaled up. Maybe not as well as they could be in, say, other operating systems, but Windows 8.1 is significantly better at display scaling than Windows 7. And that actually wraps up everything that is going in this machine. But how much does it cost? Well, in the UK, it costs £529, and then in the US, it's $566. Now, these prices were taken from Park Picker UK and US, respectively, so it may not reflect the actual price that you'll have to pay, but of course, if you look at the links in the description below, you'll be able to see how much it is going to cost you after you've added stuff like delivery and various things like that. So what do you think of this rig? Do you think it's a great value budget PC or do you think it's absolute tosh? Do let me know in the comments below. I will again reiterate that this is not the cheapest you can go. You can cut some corners. You can get a slightly cheaper motherboard if you're not so bothered about the reliability. You can go down to four gigabytes of RAM if you know you're not going to be playing any games uh, that require any more than that. And of course, you can get rid of the SSD if you say, I don't want a super quick PC. I'm happy for it to take ages to load the simplest things but obviously if you have to make those cuts you know you have to make those cuts and you can upgrade at least the ram and the ssd at a later date so thank you so much for watching this video as always do let me know what you thought of both the quality of the video the parts and just everything in general in the comments section below like i say do find the links to the parts from part picker in the description below Thank you so much for watching this video. If you think it has been good, then please give it a like and say, yes, this was very good, I liked it. Um, if you didn't like it, have a guess what you need to do. Give it a dislike and say, nah, nah, get rid of it. Don't do it again. 
get off the internet. But fair enough, simple dislike actually will say all those things to me. Now, it is worth noting that if you do like videos like this and you want more on PCs, gaming and technology, then of course hit the subscribe button. Not only does it help me by having more followers, but it actually gets all my great content straight to your inbox. How about that? And when I say great content, I've filmed this video once already and it was slightly out of focus and I've redone the entire thing. That is my commitment. Redone the entire thing. Promise you. Promise you that. I've been sat in this seat for about an hour. Thank you so much for watching this video though and I'll see you in the next one.